The fictional supermetal vibranium has the distinction of being simultaneously one of the most and least understood materials in the pop culture universe. We all know that it's in Captain America's shield. Oh! It's rogue now, and in Black Panther's cool as heck suit, and that it absorbs kinetic energy. But how does vibranium do this? That's never been fully explained, so let's imagine ourselves Wakandan scientists and figure it out. But before we start today's show, I'm very excited to announce that we did it! Because Science is officially its own ecosystem. Right now, you can go to facebook.com slash because science or youtube.com slash because science and subscribe to this show where we will be doing all new stuff and more stuff and nerdier stuff. You can also find us across social media. So you can find all those links in the show notes and you can go subscribe right now or after. I can wait. We should start though. Vibranium is most well known for being the extraterrestrial metal that the nation of Wakanda used to advance their technology far beyond the outside worlds. T'Challa, the king of Wakanda, has the metal woven into his Black Panther suit, which serves as both offense and defense. The metal is incredibly durable, nigh indestructible, protecting T'Challa, but it also builds up energy to be released in powerful pulses. The suit does that by, as his sister says in this clip, You've been taking bullets, charging it up with kinetic energy. But how could vibranium woven into a suit absorb and redirect kinetic energy? And does that even make sense? I think the specifics of vibranium are so complicated because 50 years of comics and movies and video games just throw around terms like momentum and kinetic energy and vibration when describing it without explaining further. So let's start from the start. Imagine that I'm Andy Serkis and I fire a bullet at Black Panther. Pew. Now that the bullet is moving, it has some momentum, equal to the bullet's mass times the bullet's velocity. Momentum is a useful measure to know because it gives us an idea how much oomph is behind its motion and it gives a direction to that motion. For example, there is no oomph in the downward direction. As it moves, the bullet also has something else useful that we can measure, kinetic energy, equal to one half times the bullet's mass times the bullet's velocity squared. Now, kinetic energy doesn't have a direction, but it's still very important to know because this energy is what will be transforming into other forms of energy once it meets T'Challa. And without this, we won't be able to fully describe what happens next, the collision. When the bullet finally impacts Black Panther's suit, all that kinetic energy can't just disappear. It has to go somewhere. If it was all returned to the bullet, and the bullet didn't completely shatter, it would just ricochet or bounce off, kind of like Captain America's shield. Whoa, that's a different episode. No, we want the kinetic energy of the bullet to go into Black Panther's suit in a collision where most, if not all, of that energy was transformed into something we could use. But what would that be? Seeing how advanced Wakandan scientists are, they could be storing all the kinetic energy Black Panther's suit is hit with as potential energy. In a perfectly elastic collision, the amount of kinetic energy before and after said collision is the same. So for example, this wall isn't moving and has zero kinetic energy. In theory, if I threw a perfectly elastic Captain America shield at it, it would return to me with the same amount of kinetic energy that I gave it. But in the real world, at least at our human scale, there are no perfectly elastic collisions. For example, if I had a perfect recreation of the textile that is Black Panther's armor, perfect, and I punched it, it would bend and deform, even if it was just a minuscule amount, and it takes some energy transformed into other forms to do this in what's called an inelastic collision. Sounds bad, but I think this is where Vibranium's true power lies. How? It takes energy to physically change or deform some material. And most of that energy is lost through internal friction of that material's atoms, heat. But what if vibranium could absorb and store kinetic energy using deformation itself? Shape an elastic material correctly and you can make a mechanism that does just that, a spring. So if I were to run at this spring, my kinetic energy would translate into a force 
which would compress the spring some distance. Now stored inside of the spring is elastic potential energy equal to one half times the spring stiffness here K times the distance it is compressed squared. Looks a lot like the kinetic energy equation, doesn't it? But how could Black Panther's suit function like a giant spring? Well, it couldn't. It could function like billions of tiny, tiny, tiny springs. What I am suggesting is that Wakandan scientists are years ahead of us in the field of molecular springs. The science of crafting incredibly efficient springs from the nanoscale on up. These scientists could then weave, using vibranium atoms, springs into the layers of T'Challa's suit that could absorb an incredible amount of energy. We know that something like that is possible, we just aren't there yet. And then, every impact's kinetic energy would be absorbed and stored by the suit as elastic potential energy. This design looks a little weird, but if Wakanda scientists could figure out how to release all of this energy at once, it would explain the suit's powers. If T'Challa's suit was absorbing and storing kinetic energy with layers of vibranium springs woven into his suit, then blocking just a few bullets could turn him into a deadly weapon. Black Panther's suit protects him from all kinds of impacts and projectiles, but let's look at bullets as an example. Now, bullets aren't very massive, just a few grams, but they have velocities that are hundreds of meters per second, sometimes thousands. And because velocity is squared in the kinetic energy equation, that means they can carry a lot, whoa, of energy with them. A typical nine millimeter bullet carries 500 joules. And uh, even if kinetic energy is absorbed, momentum is still conserved, so that, that always hurts. So if Black Panther's suit is perfectly transforming the kinetic energy of impacts and projectiles into elastic potential energy to be used later, then during a firefight, he would absolutely have a lot of energy to work with. So let's say some bad guy fired a whole clip of nine millimeter bullets at Black Panther, maybe 17. After they were done impacting his suit, T'Challa would have eight kilojoules of energy to work with. If some bad guy fired a whole clip of AK-47 rounds at T'Challa, maybe 30, after they were done impacting, that number would expand to 62 kilojoules, which is a lot. That's the kind of energy that space debris moving at 10 kilometers per second has. That keeps NASA up at night. Okay, fine, but how does all that energy get back out of the suit to smash cars and produce blast waves and stuff? Well, this is where the spring suit layer idea makes a lot more sense. If the Black Panther suit was storing thousands of jewels in billions and billions of tiny compressed molecular springs, then the suit itself could do the damage. So let's say that T'Challa was just touching something like a car. He loves destroying cars. And his suit was charged up with all of that AK-47 fire that we discussed previously. Then, when the springs returned to their original position at T'Challa's command, they could push on a two-ton car hard enough to move it from a dead stop to 10 meters per second instantaneously, or 20 miles an hour. The forces required to do that are so enormous that the car wouldn't just move, it would implode. The forces and accelerations involved here actually have a real world analog, the dreaded mantis shrimpy. This little crustacean uses spring-like muscles to store a lot of elastic potential energy and release it in fractions of a second. The energies come out of the mantis shrimp so quickly, in fact, that it creates a bubble of light and heat around its strikes that really ruin a crab's day. T'Challa, with a suit made from the equivalent of billions and billions of tiny mantis shrimp claws, could do the same in air as his suit accelerated through it. 
So, how does Black Panther's famous vibranium suit really work? Well, if it is absorbing kinetic energy, that energy has to be going somewhere. And I am suggesting that Wakandan scientists have found a way to store it as elastic potential energy inside billions of tiny nanoscale vibranium springs woven into his suit. Then, after taking just a few bullet impacts, T'Challa could simply touch an object and produce shock waves like a mantis shrimp or implode it with massive forces supplied applied by the suit itself, which is exactly what we see in the film. The only other thing we'd have to explain is how vibranium can store that much energy and hold on to it until it's told to release it. But I don't think that's that hard to figure out for an extraterrestrial metal used by a highly advanced technological society. Because science. Even if Black Panther suit is absorbing 100% of the kinetic energy, momentum is still conserved. So his mass would still have to move with some velocity, which is why, don't worry, no spoilers, that, which is why if he gets hit by someone in a movie, he still moves or still gets thrown back. It's just physics, it's not magic. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, Because Science is now its own channel on Facebook, on YouTube, just slash Because Science, or you can go to at Because Science on Instagram and Twitter, where we're putting up all new episodes and all new content. You can go there and subscribe right now. Thank you again.